prayer is a very mighty activity see it is where we release the power and the blessings of god into our life and the devil does not want that the forces of hell do not want that the world does not want that you see so next time when you go to pray don't think you're going to praying you don't think you're going to pray just tell yourself i am going to go release <laughs> release blessing prayer is our subject right something that uh, we think is familiar at the beginning but uh, it's not as familiar as we think you know if you look at it at a superficial sort of level you know if you start thinking about prayer we all give certain level of importance to prayer we being christians we are after all christians worshiping god you know believers and we all give a certain level of importance we treat it with sort of respect and reverence you know when we say let us pray we all stop talking we bow our heads we close our eyes we know we need to reverence it respect it and so on before important events in our life before important turning points in our life we make sure we enter with prayer you know we have a little meeting we call the pastor we tell him to sing you know pray give a message we know is important right and uh, but this is only a superficial view if you start looking at it little more deeply right i think we get a different picture if you ask most christians today i don't want to say all christians but most christians if you ask them if you ask them you know uh, do you pray how is your individual private prayer life and if you look at most christians and say are you satisfied with your with your individual prayer life are you satisfied most christians if they stop and think about it and give an honest answer it will be no right i'm not i don't want to say all christians i'm sure some people would say yes and they would have maybe excellent prayer lives right maybe some of you are sitting here but i believe most of us if we are honest with ourselves if we think carefully enough about our individual prayer lives are we satisfied with it i think the honest answer would be no most of us would say you know i know prayer is important 
I know I should be praying more, but unfortunately, I don't do it. So for so many reasons, you know, life has become so busy. I'm not able to find the time. Or maybe even when I find the time, I'm not sure how to pray for very long. You know, how do you pray for more than 10 minutes? I prayed for myself, I prayed for my family, I prayed for my workplace, I prayed for my church, I prayed for my pastor, I prayed for his family. Well, that's it. I've run out of things to pray for. I don't know how to pray very long. You see, I wish I prayed more, but I can't, I don't, and I don't know. <laughs> see, we all know we should pray more, but unfortunately, that's not so easy. If I stand here for the rest of the message and keep saying, keep shouting, you know, you need to pray more, pray more, pray more, I don't know if that will make any sort of <laughs> difference. I believe the best way to motivate ourselves to pray more is to recover the truth about the greatness of prayer. The power of prayer, the glory of prayer, what prayer can do for us. I think we've forgotten it. You see, we don't think too highly of prayer. That's the problem. If we think too highly of it, as we ought to, then I believe we will be praying more. You see, the problem is we have, you know, somehow prayer has lost its glory, shall we say. <laughs> we have lost sight of its value or greatness. You know, let me give you, if you, you just try telling Christians, let's get together and pray. That will draw the least crowd. Have you noticed that? Same thing if you say, let's get together and eat. <laughs> or if you say, let's get together and play cricket, you know. Then you'll get... Even if you forget, they will keep on pestering you. When are we going for dinner? When are we going to get, you know, play? When are we... Same thing, prayer. Even in our personal lives, we don't give a sort of top priority to prayer. I, I'm, I'm talking about most of us, right? I'm not talking about all of us. I'm sure there are some prayer warriors in this place. I'm not talking about them. I'm talking about most of us. You know, usually we tend to give prayer the last priority, sort of. Right? Last option. It's like, you know, try all the other options, then come to prayer. If you're sick, well, try your own grandmother's method, you know. If that doesn't work, then go to the doctor. If that doctor doesn't work out, then go to another doctor. Try every other option, then finally... <laughs> Pray, right? And if it's a great sickness and you know the doctors are not going to help you, then immediately you go and pray, you know. Well, even in ministries, have you seen sometimes ministries will give out a letter and they'll say, you know, we need some help, please help us. The way you can help us is this. Number one, you can contribute financially. That will be your biggest help. Number two, can you volunteer? <laughs> Can you come and spend your time and volunteer? We will not pay you anything. No salary. Can you volunteer? You can't do that also. Okay, number three. Pray for. As though to say, the least amount of help you can do for us is to pray for. <laughs> the most help you can do is to contribute financially. The least is, you see, prayer has sort of gone, you know, been pushed to the corner, you know. Even when we tell people, you know, I can't give you money, I'll pray for you. They will take it as an excuse. They'll think this fellow is chumma just trying to make an excuse, you know. We say, I can't come, I'm sorry, but I'm praying for you, you know. Sometimes even we mean it as a... <laughs> you see, some Christians think prayer is even a boring activity, you know. Tell them, let's pray, and you'll see the faces go. I, I don't know when this is going to end, you know. They cringe at the thought of prayer. You see, we seem to have lost our appreciation for prayer. It's greatness. See, maybe, you know, prayer, uh, my father taught on prayer in this church about 12 years ago. If you haven't heard it, you should hear it. It's in the bookstall. You go and find out and get it and hear it. It will benefit you greatly. Right? Maybe you heard that. Eh? If you heard that, maybe you've forgotten it, you see. And so I believe the teaching on prayer is necessary. Some people have never heard, in our church we always have new people coming, and they, you know, it's possible you've never heard about the greatness of prayer. Maybe you never thought of prayer as a great thing, as something amazing, something great, something that can do great things, you know. So I believe we need to look at this, I want to talk about the greatness of prayer, and I want to talk about this week, this week and next week I want to focus on the greatness of prayer. And this week I want to tell you basically one point about the greatness of prayer, right? What is that one point? It is this. 
prayer releases God's power and blessing into our lives. Let me say that again. Prayer releases God's power and blessing into our lives. If we can try to get a revelation of this, if we can understand this and truly understand it and see how amazing this is, I tell you it will give you motivation to pray more. All right, so listen carefully. We're talking about the, what is the thing that releases the power and blessing into your life? It is your prayer. Let's talk about that word release, right? What do we mean by that? We mean the power and the blessing is already there. Your prayer has the job of releasing it. It's like this, you know, a dam, right? They store up water and, and then you have a dam, right? And then when they want, they open the dam. What happens when they open the dam? The water that is already stored up is released and so it moves from this side to that side of the dam. It's not that when you open the dam, now only you're getting the water from the waterfalls. No, 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 the water is already there, stored up, ready to go, ready to be used. Opening the dam is the point of release. It is the thing that releases it, you see. It's like, you know, we say movie release. You know, we use that term, right? The release date for the movie, they'll say. Think about that, right? The movie is already made produced, made, ready, right? Shooting has already happened, took many months, maybe many years, and they've spent a great deal of money and effort and time and energy to make a movie, and they've kept it ready, but unless it is released, nobody can watch it and enjoy it. <laughs> the day they can watch it and enjoy it is the day of the release. So, first day, first show, the release, they all flock there, you see. The release is something big, you know. Prayer has the power to release the blessing and the power of God into your life. Let me give you some example. Um, salvation. Salvation. Let's think about how we receive salvation. Salvation is the greatest blessing that a human being can receive, right? How did you receive that blessing? When did you receive it? You received it when you prayed for it. You remember that little prayer you made? Maybe some point in your life, you know, when you were young, maybe, I don't know, when you made it. But try to remember, you, you said a little prayer. You said, Jesus, come into my heart, right? Jesus, be my Lord. Jesus, be my Savior. Wash my sins, you know. Uh, I believe you died for me. You said a little prayer, right? That's the moment your salvation got released, right? I'm not trying to say prayer only saved you, no. I'm not trying to say it's your prayer only that. Saved you? No, obviously not. It's not the prayer alone that saved you. God had to do many things before you even prayed, right? God prepared many things for your salvation before you ever prayed. Before the foundation of the world, God planned this salvation and then he slowly began to reveal it and then he sent his son into the world. His son lived and died and rose again and ascended to the heavens and then by the power of the Holy Spirit, God has been working continuously in this world, raising up preachers that would preach the salvation message like that. He sent a preacher to preach it to you. You heard it. All this had to happen before you said that little prayer. And all this you didn't do, God only did, right? But think about it. If all this happened, even though God did so much and you did not say that little prayer, would you have received salvation? No. In spite of the fact that God did so much, Jesus did so much, your preacher did so much, <laughs> all of that happened, but still you never received <laughs> You received salvation the moment you believed and prayed, said a little prayer out from your own mouth, right? See, we are not trying to say prayer is everything. Some people say prayer is everything, you know, and neglect everything else. They will neglect the word of God and say prayer only is everything. Let us pray. Forget about word of God. No, we are not saying, no, no, a lot of other things are there. It must all happen, but finally prayer must happen. Only when the prayer happens, whatever happens before is released. You see, otherwise nothing gets released. Think about it. Prayer is not everything. Everything has to happen. Other things have to happen. But if everything happens and there is no prayer, you have nothing. Right? Same thing, if everything happens correctly and then finally there is prayer, you get everything. Right? You benefit. What I'm trying to say is, Prayer has to happen. Finally, prayer has to happen. That only releases it finally. The blessings and the power of God into your life, see. Another example. 
the baptism of the Holy Spirit. The baptism of the Holy Spirit. Think about it. The, uh, the biggest blessing a human being can receive is salvation. But once a person gets saved, the biggest blessing a saved person can receive is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I'm just going to say a few words about it because some people may not know what it is. The baptism of the Holy Spirit, you know, if you come here, we'll baptize you in water if you want before the English service, right? This is not like that. This is not a baptism we give. No, no. This is a baptism which God himself gives. The Bible teaches that after salvation, God gives another gift called the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You know, during salvation, he sends the Holy Spirit to dwell inside of us. That is an indwelling. But when he baptizes us with the Holy Spirit, he fills us with the Spirit. That is an infilling, not just an indwelling. There is a greater measure of the Holy Spirit in our life. And we experience the presence and the power of God in a greater, far greater way. That is what the Bible teaches. You can see in the book of Acts again and again that people get saved and then they get baptized in the Holy Spirit. Baptized with the Holy Spirit. Not baptized water, right? That also happens, but I'm saying salvation is the first experience the next great experience is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. If many, uh, let us see how we receive it. Luke chapter 11 verse 13. If you then who are evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him? When did you receive the Holy Spirit? How do you receive the Holy Spirit? To whom does God give the Holy Spirit? The Heavenly Father, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask? Only to those who ask, not to all people. Notice that. Only to those who ask, not to all believers. Not to all people, you know, who are very faithful coming into church. No, 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 no. Only to those who ask it's not that your prayer alone will bring the baptism of the holy spirit no no obviously not the other things need to happen you need to get saved you know that only qualifies you you need to hear about such a thing there you need to know that there is such a thing such, uh, as baptism of the holy spirit you we read in the book of acts paul goes to ephesus one time and uh, he asks a group of young men you know um, and he says are you baptized in the holy spirit and they say no i've never even heard about this baptism of the holy spirit then paul teaches them about it and they want the baptism and they pray and they get baptized. That's the story in the book of Acts, you see. So you need to get saved. You need to hear about this baptism of the Holy Spirit. You need to desire it. All these things need to happen. But at the end of that process, a little prayer needs to happen. <laughs> Finally, we need to open our mouth and ask. The Heavenly Father gives the Holy Spirit only to those who ask. Everybody say ask. You ask in prayer, the blessing of the baptism of the Holy Spirit gets released, you see. I think today there are many who have not received this blessing simply because they have not asked. There are many reasons why we may not receive, you see. One reason, I think, is people simply have not asked, that's all. Another reason is they don't know, you know. But those who know, they have not Asked sometimes. You may, sing, you may say it's such a small thing. Yeah, it's such a small thing, but it's a powerful thing to ask, my friend. Another example, Philippians 4, 6. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. In the English, in the verse 7, we have and the peace of God. In the Tamil, it starts like this, then. Then the peace of God. That's what it means. When the peace of God. You see, when do we receive the peace of God? The peace, let's take the peace of God as a blessing, right? When is the peace of God released? The peace of God is already waiting. It is there, ready. See, God has already prepared every single blessing for us that we ever need in our life. God is always like that, right? Before he created Adam, he already made the garden. He already made every tree, made everything ready. Then only he made Adam. Same way, before you got saved, everything for your life has been kept ready, waiting in your account to be used by you, you see. No eye has seen, no ear has heard, no eye has 
uh, no, mind has conceived the things which God has prepared for those who love him. Notice the things which God has prepared. God has already prepared. He's already made it ready. So peace of God is already there, but it will not get released until we pray. Are you able to see that, right? You see, it says, don't worry about anything. Philippians 4, 6 again, right? Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer. Notice the word prayer, supplication, thanksgiving. Let your request be made known to God. Then, then only, at that point, after that only, the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will. A lot of people are saying today there's no peace in the home, a lot of tension, anxiety, you know. What is the solution, my friend? The Bible says, don't worry, leave your tension aside and say a little prayer. <laughs> Do a little praying. You see, the word prayer, supplication, thanksgiving is used there. Only when you do the praying, the peace of God can get released. It's not enough to know that God's peace is there. It's not enough to know God has prepared everything. It's not enough to hear a lot about faith. All that is good, but finally you've got to do a little prayer. Otherwise it won't get released. You see, there are other verses, you know, come boldly to the throne of grace that you may receive mercy and grace to help in time of Need, Hebrews chapter 4 says, right? Mercy and grace is already there, ready. But you have to come boldly to the throne of grace to receive it. You see, there is, this prayer is the final step that releases it. This is the value of prayer, you see. God has done all the work. He has prepared everything for us. Every single blessing you need, every need of yours, he has already prepared for and kept it ready. His power and blessing is ready, put in our account, ready for us to use. But when we neglect praying in our life, what we are doing is we are failing to release what God has prepared for us. You know, we think when we don't pray sometimes, well, I... Today I was very busy, I didn't pray. <laughs> right? We think we didn't pray because life just got too busy. Right? Let me tell you what's actually going on. The devil is very happy to keep you busy. Because he wants to do everything he can to keep you from praying. Because he knows if you start praying, if you start spending a little time praying, then the blessings of God will be released in a greater manner in your Life, you see. He knows, you see. That verse says, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has conceived, right? The things which God has prepared for those who, I have a feeling the devil has, knows more about what God has prepared for us than we ourselves know sometimes, you know. It's because he is trying all he can to do to keep us from praying. You think it is just your busyness that keeps you from praying? You know, think about it. Prayer is one strange activity. When you try to pray, that's when you feel like sleeping. You notice that? The power of sleep works at its greatest strength when you pray. How is that? You think it's just mere coincidence? No, it's not mere coincidence. You know, obviously sometimes you may not have slept, uh, you know, and may not have had a good night's sleep, and I understand, but not always, you see. How is it that always sleep comes? How is it that always when you try to pray, an important phone call comes? You notice that? When you try to pray, it gets boring. When you try to pray, some church work comes. I know. And I used to think, you know, well, church, this is church work. This is some, I'm after all doing it for God. Eh? <laughs> no, no, no. If you leave the prayer and go do the church work, uh, that, that, is, that will take you on a dangerous path, you see. You think you're doing great things for God, you know, but if you neglect the prayer and spending the time with Him, everything is gone. Everything will become meaningless. All the church work will become meaningless, you see. All the volunteering, all this, uh, all this and that, you know, will become meaningless if we neglect it. If it is done at the expense of our prayer, life, you see, devil and the circumstances, everything comes and somehow tries to keep us from praying. You try it. You see, you try to pray and you see how many hindrances you have. Just try it in your life. 
right? You see, why? Prayer is a very mighty activity, you see. It is where we release the power and the blessings of God into our life. And the devil does not want that. The forces of hell do not want that. The world does not want that, you see. So next time when you go to pray, don't think you're going to praying. You you don't think you're going to pray. Just tell yourself, I'm going to go release. (laughs) Release blessing. Everybody say, release blessing. blessing. Just tell yourself, I'm going to go release blessing. Very important activity. Every word of worship with one accord Every praise 